What's up, fiends? Alucard here. Today, I have a forgotten gem for you. The 1993 horror anthology film, Necronomicon, Book of the Dead. Released by August Entertainment, Davis Film and Necronomicon Films were on a $4 million budget. Necronomicon made the rounds at a few film festivals, even winning some FX awards. It eventually got a VHS release two days before Halloween in 1996. To this day, this is the only official physical release this movie has ever received in the United States. And it's a damn shame. This movie is just begging to be seen by the masses. I discovered this gem on late night HBO back in the mid 90s. Now, I would like to offer that while I am a Lovecraft fan, I am not all that familiar with the world he has created. So I will not be looking at this film with a hardcore Lovecraft lens. I'll be looking at this more as a horror film rather than a Lovecraft film. So we start off in the fall of 1932, where the Necronomicon is being guarded by clandestine monks in a U.S. monastery. H.P. Lovecraft played by the incomparable Jeffrey Combs in a nose piece and chin piece, making him look very Bruce Campbell-like, steals a key from one of the monks to get to the locked up book. He, of course, gets locked in with the book and loses the key. He then reads from the book and takes notes, and we go to our first story. The Drowned, loosely based on The Rats in the Wall, and is directed by French director Christophe Gans now known for such films as Silent Hill and Brotherhood of the Wolf. It stars Bruce Payne, Maria Ford, and Richard Lynch. This story is about a Swedish man named Edward Delapore inheriting an abandoned seaside hotel from his uncle Jethro, who killed himself there. Edward notices a portrait of a woman who the realtor tells him is an ancestor and Jethro's wife, who had drowned nearby. We backtrack to Jethro, who is visited by a sea creature that gives him a copy of the Necronomicon. Jethro finds a resurrection part in the book and proceeds to perform the ritual to bring back his wife and son. It is successful, but they come back all drippy and oozy, pretty gross. So Edward decides to try it as well, since he just lost his wife in an automobile accident. You can probably guess it turns out badly, as the wife comes back as a tentacled creature. Now we return to Lovecraft, trapped in the cell, now with water gushing underneath the room. So then we move on to our second story, The Cold, loosely based on the story Cool Air, and is directed by Japanese director Shusuke Kaneko, best known now as the director of the Heisei Gamera trilogy, Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters All Out Attack, and the live-action Death Note films. This one stars David Warner and Bess Meyer, and takes place in Boston as reporter Dale Porkle goes to interview Amy Osterman about unsolved murders in the area. Amy has a rare disease where she is resistant to heat and sunlight. She tells him the story of her mother, Emily, fleeing from an abusive stepfather who arrived at the same house 22 years earlier to rent a room from the landlord, Lena. The only other occupant is the mysterious Dr. Richard Madden, who Emily is told to stay away from. After a gratuitous shower scene, Emily notices a gooey patch on the ceiling. Distracted by that, she gets attacked by her stepfather. Madden emerges and takes out the stepfather with a scalpel. She awakens and Madden says her stepfather is gone. We learn that Madden suffers from the same heat resistance disease as Amy does. The next day, she discovers Madden and Lena carving up a body, and that Madden also used her stepfather's body as a cadaver for an experiment, but claims he'd never hurt her. And we get an awkward sex scene in a refrigerated greenhouse. Lena, who also has a thing for Madden, confronts Emily, so she, Emily leaves. She eventually returns, which causes a ruckus, which ends up with everyone either dead or injured. The story ends in the present with the reporter learning the rest of the story. Now we cut back to Lovecraft and he notices the wall openings after every story, the next like layer kind of opens. 
But he continues with another story, of course. So then we get to the last story called The Whispers. Apparently, it is not based on The Whisper in the Dark. <laughs> this one as well as the wraparound library story is directed by Brian Yuzna. The Whispers stars Sidney Coleman, Don Kalfa, Judy Drake, and Oba Babatunde. It's based in Philadelphia, where pregnant officer Sarah Samuels and her partner Paul are in pursuit of a notorious serial killer called The Butcher, which leads to her crashing the police car and Paul's body being taken by The Butcher. Sarah follows the trail to an abandoned warehouse that is inhabited by a strange couple named Harry and Daisy. Daisy claims The Butcher is an alien, while Harold says he only works for aliens. Sarah descends further to find her life and work partner, Paul. What ensues is a nightmare into hell that you soon won't recover from. We conclude with Lovecraft fighting off a monster in the cell and escaping with the Necronomicon. Is there a sequel? Nope, not yet at least. <laughs> but man, this movie is awesome. I remember enjoying it years ago when I saw it, but this rewatch confirmed its awesomeness. How has no company gotten the rights to put this out on Blu-ray or 4K. Hell, it's never even had a DVD release. Sure, some of the acting is a bit stiff, and it seems that things are missing from the first story. I don't know if it's bad editing, they just left stuff out, I don't know. But it is the weakest of the, of the three, although the acting overall in it is very high. Jeffrey Combs' performance is fantastic, as usual. I really dug that the directors are all from different areas of the world, uh, in fact, Kaneko spoke no English at the time at all, which makes the second segment even more fascinating. And I can never say enough about the use of practical effects. It will, To me, it'll always trump CG. I don't care. And here, the practical effects, they're slimy, they're gooey, they're gross. It's just what's needed for this Lovecraftian-type epic. Overall, I'm going to give Necronomicon four bats out of five. I highly recommend this one for fans of cosmic horror, anthology horror, and Jeffrey Combs fans. If this ever gets a proper disc release, I'm all over it. Until next time, adiosi, Bella Lugosi.